A few weeks ago, WPP's decision to bring together VML Wayanar and Wonderman Thompson raised many questions about the effectiveness of mergers. But right here in this room, I have a glowing example of a very successful merger carried out years ago. And joining me is uh, the global CEO of WaveMaker, that very agency, Toby Jenner. Thank you, thank you for joining us, Toby. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. So tell me, what is the secret ingredient of a great merger? And today, when you look back, would you say you've achieved much more as WaveMaker than an MSC or a Maxis would have? Oh, that's a very, very good question. Look, I think the first thing is I joined post-merger. Right. So actually, a lot of the uh, challenging elements of putting a merger together had already been done. I think what I then had the opportunity to do with some amazing people in the organisation was to really just say, when we were developing WaveMaker, or the new WaveMaker as we called it, and what are the things we want to keep, what are the things we want to throw away, and what are the decisions we need to make today, mm -hmm. and what are the decisions we can keep, Later, keep yeah. down, the, down the path. And I think we made a lot of tough decisions straight away. So we reduced the leadership team from 23 mm -hmm. down to 12. Uh, we decided to uh, build a very clear narrative around this idea of positive provocation. Right. Uh, we built a modular approach to how we plan mm -hmm. rather than sequential, which many uh, clients uh, and agencies adhere to. And I think as we went into a pandemic, being able to dip into different parts of that modularity really uh, benefited our clients. And just generally an attitude of empowering our people to have a point of view on our clients' business mm -hmm. rather than just take orders uh, and book media. That's mm -hmm. what I really wanted. That was the genesis behind the idea of positive provocation. So I think make the tough decisions uh, on the big issues uh, and uh, build a great team mm -hmm. and have a very clear proposition of what you want to stand for. And I think those three things have stood us in really good stead. And another thing is I think WPP has suffered a surprise Q3 decline. Uh, and Mark Reed spoke about how uh, Group M has suffered largely because the technology clients have had cautious spending. How has WaveMaker uh, fared in this, this particular quarter? Uh, well, I look at it across the full year. So across the full year, uh, I think Group M will grow significantly. Uh, you know, we have uh, a number of large tech businesses, but we'll still see uh, significant growth on you know a, a very very large business. You know we represent one in three mm -hmm. uh, ads around the world, dollars invested. So uh, any kind of growth that you see on that scale is many many millions of dollars. And, and WaveMaker is uh, a cornerstone and underpinning that, along with our, our sister agencies as well. So we'll see good growth this year. Uh, is, is there a rough estimate now. because I think you also topped the convergence ranking for new business wins globally and also in India, which is great. Well, we, we've got uh, six weeks to go. We're currently $240 million ahead of number two. So I've got my fingers and toes crossed that we'll finish the year number one and that will obviously more impact next year actually uh, as a springboard for, for growth rather than this year. But this year looks good for us. But what are the new areas, new avenues for growth for Waymaker globally and also specifically India? Uh, well, I think some of the areas we've discussed with uh, Ajay and the team are, you know, forever and a day we've been optimising media, we've been optimising audiences and we've been optimising platforms. I think we have a role to play in how we optimise content mm -hmm. on those platforms now. And I think we've uh, built some good resource and capabilities with George uh, coming in from Ogilvy to help us in that area. I think we have a real role to play there. Uh, I think we've got uh, an opportunity around performance uh, and commerce uh, and influencer marketing. I think those would certainly be uh, an area that I'd like to see us uh, build out. You know, we're coming from a very strong base in mm -hmm. India, I would say. Uh, India is certainly one of our best performing markets in the world uh, and so anything we do is off a, off a, off a high base but I think uh, that idea of social commerce and influencer marketing coming together should really see us power some clients uh, performance and growth uh, in sales.
And just one last question. I think uh, last year you spoke to us uh, at Impact and you said very nice three things, very interesting three things. Uh, you said APAC can uh, lead to double digit growth for WaveMaker. That's one. Second, you said India can lead that growth uh, in APAC for WaveMaker. And third, like something like you just mentioned, you said India has the potential to become the biggest uh, growth market for WaveMaker globally. In the past one year, how much has, of that has happened? Oh dear, I'm being quoted. Uh, <laughs> Two out of three, I would say, I got right uh, a year later. So uh, India absolutely leading growth around the world. I'm sure there are some smaller markets with higher growth, but of our top 10 markets, India absolutely is growing uh, at the highest percentage, so fantastic. Uh, APAC has, I would say, come back in the back six months of this year, uh, mm -hmm. and India in particular has powered a lot of that, so I'm, I'm thrilled by that. Uh, I think India will become a top three market uh, either this year or next year. We'll see how the numbers pan out for the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, but then next year, absolutely, I see it being top three, mm -hmm. uh, the growth that we're expecting uh, in the business. So, yeah, I mean, I think my predictions were worryingly accurate for once. Yeah, I'm just tempted to ask you one more question. Now, WaveMaker has always uh, placed innovation at the heart of what you do. And uh, I was going through the can wins and I realized that uh, the Mondelez Shahrukh Khan win uh, was, uh, got, got you a titanium uh, in 2022, the only titanium that WaveMaker had won that year. And then again, last year, in 2023, uh, you won uh, a creative uh, effectiveness Grand Prix that was also WaveMaker's only Grand Prix. So I want to understand from you, where would you place India, I mean, you know, when you compare it to the other markets, at uh, media, uh, when it comes to media creativity, where would it rank? Uh, I think right up there. I mean, I think India is our, uh, is probably our most creative market. I think, I think the, the market as a whole mm -hmm. uh, does two things very well. I think it does humour very mm -hmm. well, and I think it does purpose very well. And I think humour and purpose are two things that land very well in Cannes. Okay. So I think from a media uh, creativity perspective, having those two components uh, in infused into the work that you do uh, really uh, leads the charge. So India, I would say, is probably our most creative market globally. Fabulous. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank today. you. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.